elections and you know people buying their votes. Let's switch over to our next story. 2019 polls budget. Saraki has hit the executive saying that it lacks foresight. The president of the Senate, Dr. Bukola Saraki, on Sunday berated the executive, alleging that its late submission of the Independent National Electoral Commission's budgets for the 2019 elections showed its lack of foresight. Saraki, in a statement made by his special advisor on new media, Olu Onemola, berated the President Muhammad Buhari organization for accusing him of slowing down the approval of the budget. Like Chukudi would say, this is a case of if you face me, I face you. Now, the group had accused Saraki of postponing the resumption of the Senate in spite of Buhari's submission of INEX budget. But Onemola, in the statement, said that the National Assembly was committed to the approval of INEX budget for the 2019 polls. Chukudi, what's your take on the story? You see, sadly, we spend time discussing on issues that don't affect the average Nigerian. The truth is, if we have elections and people come out to exercise their right to franchise by voting for their preferred candidate, it's a way of advancing our democracy. But when the major stakeholders play politics with the future of this country, it is a major problem. Now, you would recall that the 2018 budget was submitted by President Mohamed Wari, although late, he had promised he was going to submit the budget earlier, but it was a month late. But using the power of appropriation enshrined in the 1999 Constitution, the National Assembly is supposed to go through and ensure that, you know, we have a balanced budget, since the, uh, the estimates emanate from the executive. But we wasted time, seven whole months, seven whole months, if you want to cook soup and you know you are hungry, seven whole months, okay, that's an aside. And now, after the 2018 budget was passed into law, we have the supplementary budget. Knowing well that the 2019 elections will be held on the 16th of February and March 2nd, 2019, the supplementary budget came late. They were supposed to sit twice at plenary, two different weeks before they proceeded on recess. But because of this politicking, APC... PDP, this party, that party, we saw how Dr. Bukola Saraki, in order to, you know, secure his position, uh, adjourned sitting, and they are supposed to resume late September. The truth is, these politicians are taking Nigerians for a ride, and it is essentially their self-interest. They are protecting what is, you know, what they consider to be what is of benefit to them, while the masses continue to wallow in abject poverty and penury. What Nigerians need to do today, from this moment, is go out, register, because you have a stake in the construction of the Project Nigeria, and you must play your part. And how do you play your part? By beginning to question those who hold positions. And how do we do that? I've always said that you don't have to have a master's degree or become a professor of political science to know how to ask basic and simple questions. Just ask yourself, we have had 19 years of uninterrupted democratic rule. The same set of leaders. Have we recorded any tremendous um, progress or improvement in our lives? Is it in the area of infrastructure? Is it in healthcare? Is it in education? Is it in security? When we begin to ask ourselves these questions, then we begin to form an idea of the questions that we would put to people who come to us and tell us that God called me to serve you, even though we know God does not use any network. Or I want to serve my people because I'm passionate about them. They would question you. It's going to be issue-based. How are you going to find a lasting solution to the problem of insecurity? How are you going to improve education? How are you going to ensure that our healthcare is standard? That we don't have public officials traveling outside this country to get the very best of Medicare? Complaining about the Asora Clinic. I mean, the Aso Villa Clinic. If the Aso Villa Clinic is not even up to par, what can we... And that's for the number one person on the land, according to... I have an X-ray machine. So... And, we, and we have Nigerians who constitute at least 4% of the medical workforce in the United Kingdom. It's, it's not that we don't have the human resources readily available. Nigerians... I dare say that Nigerians are you know, some of the most ingenious and industrious people in the world. 5,000 doctors in South Africa are Nigerian. That is literally just in another African country on the exact same continent. And 5,000 of our doctors want to prosper there because they have a system too that they are not finding over here. If that isn't a disaster, then I don't know what is. Let me paint a picture. With all the issues that we have to contend with, you know the official time for putting on your generator in Nigeria is 7 p.m. You know you have to spend hours in traffic you have to be prepared to cause, you know, certain people that are driving anyhow on the road. 
with all the issues that we are faced with, Nigerians still try to get by every day. Just imagine we live in a country where you I don't have to works. you don't have to come back and say, ah, I need to I need to do my laundry and iron immediately. Before they take the light. Before they take the light. You don't have to be worried. Ah, have you taken this light today? Hey, this light will soon spoil. Or you don't have to come and say, hey, hey, SAS, hey, Nigeria police force, hey, what is going on? Imagine we live in a country where the basic necessities of life are readily available. Just think of the endless possibilities. Looking at the character of the Nigerian. Nigerians thrive in any advanced society. We spoke of the doctor that carried out a procedure, a surgical procedure that had never been done in history. He took out the baby from the mother, mm. carried out a process, put the baby back, sealed the woman, and she still gave birth through a natural process that even Barack Obama was impressed. That guy started in a Nigerian university. We have Nigerians that are doing exceedingly well outside the shores of this country. Let's not forget about the young girls from Anambra State in the technovation competition that wowed the world. Now, if we have people who naturally have been endowed and imbued with creativity, why then should bad leadership continue to supplant our growth and development? And if you look at the percentage of those who have piloted the administrative affairs of this country in the last 19 years or since independence, you begin to wonder at why you have a lot of people still looking on like morons. Sorry to use this word, but we need to be very, very blunt and state the fact. Fact is, we're in a situation where our current debt is 22 trillion naira. And at the end of the day, we need a solution, and we need a solution quickly. Chukudi, thank you so much for this thank extensive for insight us, into Chukudi. these stories. And viewers, sorry to start your Monday off with a bit of a, you know, but at the end of the day, the news is the news. This is exactly what is trending right now. And like Chukudi rightly said, ask your questions. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.